Mirio's original. And welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we read your reviews and read your emails and most importantly, play your backed up voicemails. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I producer Maria. Uh, do we have any new reviews? No. Review us. Uh, rate us, review us, and uh, we want to get to a thousand uh, reviews and ratings. And if you rate or review us, please. Uh, DM us your Twitter and Instagram names and we will follow you uh, as an incentive. So please, 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 please do that. Okay. Voicemail numero uno. Hey, web crawlers. Um, now that I heard like Craig talking about the cream cheese thing, I wanted to call about other weird food combinations because I feel like I have a couple weird ones and I feel like the rest of the listenership probably has a lot of them too. The first one is my dad used to eat when he was in college or not college. I guess he was a little older than that. Um, but when he was like my age, 20s, I don't know why this matters. He used to put ranch on pasta. So he used to like make pasta like without anything on it and then like pour ranch on it. And I remember my mom telling me about this when I was a young child and being like, oh my God, my dad is disgusting. (laughs) However, (laughs) I have my own food. I have a lot of issues with food, so I tend to eat a lot of weird stuff. And when I was young, my like favorite, favorite thing in the world was frozen peas, which I've heard can give you food poisoning, so I don't recommend. What? But I used to eat just like handfuls of frozen peas. And also... Um, uncooked oatmeal, so just like oh. like the instant oats, but like with nothing, like just Whoa. like a spoonful of the dry instant oats. Ew, what the um, that was a delicacy. <laughs> I was a big fan of that. Um, okay, and I would love to hear. Also, I forgot. Do you guys have a PO box right now or no? Because I really would no. like to send you some baked goods. I feel like no. I've been promising this for a long time. This is Rosie, by the way. Um, <clears throat> But I'm I'm a little confused about the status of the P.O. box. Um, So, yeah, and I would love to hear if anybody else, like any other web caller listeners, have weird food combinations. Because I feel like that could be fun. Okay. Love you. Bye. Frozen peas. My mom 100% used to eat pasta with ranch dressing in the 90s. I think maybe it was a thing. It was like pasta salad. She would just make like penne oh. and put ranch on it. I don't know. It doesn't the... sound bad to me. It doesn't sound bad to me at all. Truly. Yeah. She would wait for the pasta to cool down. So it'd be like cold pasta. Cold with ranch noodles on it. and ranch. Yeah. I can see how yeah. that's good. Yeah. I, and I, a spoonful of oatmeal dry mm-hmm. seems like an, an adventure. <laughs> it seems like it's not. Easy. <laughs> not, yeah, it seems like you wouldn't be able to You'd swallow cough it up. that. It's like the cinnamon challenge. Yeah. yeah. Hey, whatever makes you happy. Okay, next message. Okay, it's a review again for web crawlers. Um, I'm just laughing at like, like n- no offense, but it is very funny how um, you guys don't really know what children are like. Because <laughs> that is definitely believably an eight-year-old. Um, oh. no. I'm a nanny and I nanny a six-year-old and the six-year-old I nanny would a hundred percent do that. And also I babysat an eight-year-old boy and he had a favorite podcast and he would 100% call that It podcast. was this American life. And that's totally what it sounds like. So <laughs> the moth. my the thing moth. is totally real eight-year-old and I hope she's doing great. And I send my love to her because she sounds she sounds very precocious and very sweet. And also, if I had a doll that cried in the middle of the night that I had to take the batteries out of, I would be quite scared because um, I was a very nervous child. So that's a shout out to the eight year old listener, and also some reassurance that this is most definitely a child. And my guess is that she called with parent permission, but I don't think she was coached on what to say. Because eight-year-olds talk like that. 
All right. Bye. <laughs> so yeah, this was well, maybe. a voicemail we got like a month ago that was apparently an eight-year-old. I don't disagree that an eight-year-old would listen to this podcast. I don't disagree that an eight-year-old would call in and talk like that. What I'm saying is, <laughs> as someone who uses voice modulating <laughs> technology for another podcast that I, or, or uh, supposedly I use voice <laughs> modulating technology for a podcast called Let's Talk with Lydia Greengrass de Alvaladejo, I can hear a warble when I hear a warble mm. because I have to listen to it very, a, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh -huh. And I've also had to pitch a lot of people's voices down. And I will say that something about it gave me pause. And I put it into my garage band and tuned it down a little bit. And it sounded very, very, very much like a young lady who was do who was who was trying to sound and and use words as an eight year old. I'll just say I that. didn't know that now you'd done that. I'll say I can say and I'll and I'm and we may have another message from that little eight year old <gasps> coming at us very soon. So, uh, what scene you want? Way to bury the lead. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> well, moving on. Um, hi. <gasps> no! Um, my name is Jade. Jade? I'm the girl who was talking Jade. about the dog that cries in the middle of the night. Um, I have an American girl dog. Her name is Nicole, and she's a doctor. I I got her I think two or three months ago. Um, I've had her for a very long time. It's the warble. Uh, That's the warble. Uh, this is my real voice. Oh, is it? Um, <laughs> my mom lets me. Um, listen to some episodes that she thinks I would like. My favorite one is the Haunted Dolls one. I just feel like Haunted Dolls are very cool. I I think they're beautiful. Like, really pretty. I, um, bye. <laughs> and a laugh. And a laugh at the end. Well, it could be her mom laughing. Yeah, maybe her mom's laughing, being like, oh, this is so cute. I don't know. I'm... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look, there's only one way to find out. That's to get a burner phone to call the number. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, ask for, for, to ask for Jade. Yeah. And then see if they're caught off guard or not. You just star six, seven. You star six, seven. That just blocks your number. Should we do it right now? Is it fucked up to 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 try to call a kid? Like, what if it actually is? A it's kid not a being kid, Allie. <laughs> it's not a kid. I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you. Okay. Hi. Um. This message is for the web crawlers. Um. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I never like Aww. called in anywhere. Oh my god, my phone anxiety. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I'm a new listener, and well, you guys. So much. I have been binging um, all the episodes. <laughs> um, I just wanted to call in because I was laughing. I was just listening to the recent mailbag, and um, I was laughing so hard when at the whole meat freezer <laughs> story, <laughs> and then Allie was talking about how she had the funky car situation. Um, okay. So I kind of did the same thing. So one time I went to the store. And I bought some, like, frozen broccoli. Well, I bought other stuff, but I brought some uh, frozen broccoli and apparently, like, forgot it oh, in no. my trunk. Oh, and it no. had been, like, a week. And it was in the middle of the summer. Oh, and no. um, I, I started smelling this weird smell in my car. And I'm like, what the heck? Is somebody, like, sneaking into my car and farting right before I get in? <laughs> like, what is going on? Yes, yeah, so that's the thing that And then happens. finally, like... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Another week went by and I go to the store again and um, open my trunk. And what do you know? There's a bag of broccoli, a big stinky bag of broccoli in my trunk. Mm. So um, 
Yeah, that's a really stupid story. Oh my gosh, don't even play this. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, uh, nothing interesting has ever happened to me, really, <laughs> that I can talk that. about, except for one time. Um, I did see a cryptid. So Ooh. I'm from Indiana. Well, that's and, interesting. Um, yeah. There's a cryptid in Indiana called Oscar, who's a giant turtle. And um, he's at Blue Lake in Cherubusco. And basically, me and my siblings used to, or not siblings, cousins used to go there every summer. And one day we're sitting out on the pier in the middle of the night. It's in the summer, you know, whatever. We're just talking about whatever, like, little girls talk about. And the water starts rippling towards us and we're like, whatever, it's probably a fish. And so we're just like not bothered by it. Cause you know, we're just so brave and strong 10 year olds. And, um, yeah. So basically we saw Oscar, the giant turtle. He's like as big as like a, a card table coming towards us. We all jump up and start running back up to the house screaming. Of course, nobody believes us, but we still talk about it to this day. Like, I'm like, is that a dream? Did, did we imagine that? And we're all like, no, we all remember this. And that's the end. That's oh, there crazy. might be a part, part two. I think there's a part two. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hi, this is Jace again. <laughs> um, I'm now one of the annoying people that leaves two voicemails. Um... <laughs> And I feel like I just rambled on so fast that you probably couldn't even tell anything that I said because I'm so <laughs> anxious fine. and nervous. Oh my gosh, I hate leaving voicemails. Okay, so yeah, so um, Oscar, the turtle. Um, yeah, so we ran up to the house screaming and uh, nobody believes us. And yeah, um, so if you would like to um, learn more about uh, Oscar, I can totally email you guys from sources on him, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm so, why did I even call? I hate this. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So I love you guys. Also, um, the Urban Legends episode was the, my favorite of all time. And I feel like it's so <laughs> underrated. Nobody ever called to talk about it. But I was Pretty laughing good. so hard about the whole snake. <laughs> <laughs> snake. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about it. It's measuring um, you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to end this. Uh, I, I just Googled pictures of Oscar the turtle. It's it's a thing. It's a giant ass turtle in Indiana. Whoa. Beast of Busco, aka Oscar. That's a big boy. That's a big boy right there. All right, next message. Hi. This message is for the web crawlers. I literally hate that people say that. I was wondering why they did, but once you call in to their very clearly acknowledged phone number, you'll understand why. Um, long story short, I don't want to be one of those to our people. So I had a UFO experience. Uh, it was definitely a UFO. Mm-hmm. I was brought to the point of a ledge. Uh, it was oh, Christmas yes. Eve. And I saw what I assumed, you know, in my mind to be, like, the New Year's star, the Christmas star. Um, But all of a sudden, that Christmas star came down upon me. It consumed us. And then it zoomed away. Um, I wish that there was a better way to explain this. It sounds so stupid. This is not the way I imagined it. Um, it came down, it enveloped us in a light, and then it was like, <laughs> and then it was wow. away. Um, I don't know if we lost time. This probably sounds crazy, but I've heard that there's other UFO experiencers who have felt and experienced the same. So if this makes sense to you, please leave another message. I guess. Thank you, guys. I love you. Ali, Melissa, Maria. Maria, we have the same birthday. We are best friends. Um, bye. Wow, a Christmas star UFO. It's a Christmas miracle. I don't know what the Christmas star is. It's just a star. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know either. I like that about you. Okay. I don't know. It's a Christmas star. It's the Christmas. All right, all uh, right. It's a Christmas time star. All right. Next message. 
Hi, this is a message for the web crawlers. It's Becky Hello, from England. Becky. Hello, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I've had the craziest synchronicity today, and it's not even like 6 a.m., and I just have to bring you guys and tell you, obviously. And last night, I had this crazy dream. It was like really long and vivid, you know, one of those really, really weird ones. Um, and the whole kind of gist of the dream was that there was different groups of people all fighting and there's like a big war going on sort of on the planet. And um, so loads and loads of stuff happened. It felt like, you know, it was hours long. And um, so at the end of my dream, I'm like stood in this big like arena and there's loads of different groups of people, like maybe six or seven groups of different people. And somebody's there saying, right, you're all going to fight it out and whoever wins, wins. So I'm stood there, really scared, you know, clearly terrified, like, that I'm going to die. And I realised that Ed Sheeran is stood next to me. Um, and he goes, why do you look so scared? So I said, well, this is it. Like, we're all going to die. <laughs> and then he turns to me and he says, don't worry, I'm the strongest person that I know. Which I thought. Wow. Oh, Ed. <laughs> Bit of a big head there, isn't he? Um, so anyway, so Ed Sheeran flies off into the sky like Superman, like straight up, starts flying around, getting these big wooden purse and like dropping them on people. And then he like builds a barrier around me and like the rest of the team that is in. And he's just flying around like proper kicking ass, basically. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. He's the strongest person that he knows. So that was real weird. Um, and then just as I was, you know, dreaming that, my boyfriend's alarm went off and woke me up. So his alarm goes off, I wake up, and then I say to him, like, Chris, I had the craziest dream. I've got to tell you now. It's a part two. Oh my God, did they have, like, this? Hi, this is uh, Becky oh, from England. This crazy. is the web crawlers. Dream synchronicity part two. Okay. Um. Where was I? So yeah, I woke up, um, started telling Chris about my dream. I think that's why I remember it, like, so vividly, because I told him, like, straight away. So I'm telling him about this dream, and I'm telling him about Ed Sheeran and stuff, and we're having a good laugh, and he's, like, comparing him to Donald Trump, you know, saying, you know, the way that Donald Trump is, I can't remember exactly, but the way he's, like, so self-centered and everything, saying, like, I'm the strongest person that I know, sort of thing. Yeah. And then I come downstairs to let my dog out the kitchen. That's why she sleeps on a night. I should mention at this point that there's a radio in my kitchen for my dog and I put that radio on during the day, not during the night. But last night, there was loads of kids playing and in one of the gardens nearby and she could hear them and she was crying because she could hear them. Mm -hmm. So last night, I went upstairs, heard crying, came back upstairs and put the radio on for her. But the radio is not usually on, ever. Maybe one other time I've put the radio on during the night in the three years that I've had her. Um, so I come downstairs, walk into the kitchen. What song is playing on the radio as I go into the oh kitchen? God. It's Sheeran, to start with, out of all the singers that could be playing on the radio at half past five in the morning, it's Sheeran. And on top of that, what song was it? It was that song... Oh, I can't remember exactly. It's called The A-Team, that's it. The song's called The A-Team. And in the song, he says, Angels Can Fly. And I go into the kitchen, right at the end of the song, where he's saying, for angels to fly, to fly, to fly, for <laughs> angels to fly. And I walk in and I'm like, that's weird. Ed Sheeran playing out of all the things. And then I hear what he's saying. And I'm like, what? Like, actual thought. What are the chances that, one, I left the radio on last night in the kitchen? What are the chances that I had a dream? And there's one more part. Good. Hi, this is for Webcrawl. This is Becky from England. This is my uh, voicemail 2.5. I'm not going to say three because it's really, really short. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, how crazy is it out of, like, how many synchronicities had to line up for me to, one, have left the radio on, two, Ed Sheeran to be on the radio, three, for me to even have a dream about Ed Sheeran, for then me to have a dream about Ed Sheeran flying, and for that particular song to be on the radio 
and on the radio at that bit when he's just saying fly, 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 fly over and over again as they're going to the kitchen. How does this happen? <laughs> so yeah, I'm totally freaked out. I like mind blown that like a million, million, million to one chance that that could have happened. Told my boyfriend and he was like, oh yeah, that's weird. And that was it. <laughs> so obviously I had to ring in and tell you guys because you'd actually understand. Um, although I'm going to have to wait like a month to hear you. Hopefully, hopefully agree with me that it was crazy. Um, but it'll be worth it, I'm sure. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. Love you guys. Keep it all. Love everything you do. Um, I think that's it. Okay, bye. La, 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 la. Wow. And cheer and dream. That's pretty crazy. That is In my sad. opinion. In my opinion as well. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, next a message. Hey, web crawlers. This is Alina. I've been meaning to call for like two weeks so I have a lot of stuff um first things first pickles griots pickles it's g-r-i-l-l-o apostrophe s griots pickles um you can get them at Costco and they're like a big bucket or you not big huge bucket but like (laughs) pretty large bucket for pickles and Target (laughs) has them they have spicy pickles I saw they even have um like a pickle de gallo, like a pickle salsa that I thought, like, oh, that's pretty interesting, oh. and like tuna or something. Those mm. are the best ever pickles ever, 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 ever. Um, next thing, <laughs> I'm Jade's mom. I <gasps> let her listen to the show. I, of course, listen to all the episodes first, and then um, I'll let her listen to the ones that I think I knew she'll it. like or I knew you know it. that are appropriate. So, like, she said, the oh, Haunted Dolls is her favorite. Um, Craig Synchronicities <laughs> is another good one. Um, the American Girl Dolls, of course, because she has an American Girl Doll. And then, speaking of synchronicities, so many synchronicities this week. Um, I'm, I'm... Pause I it for a second, in, Melissa. Uh, Gordy, I buy it. I buy it. But, Maria, I know yeah, you're still skeptical, I'm, so... Um, I was asked to work out in Rancho Cucamonga for the first time ever. And I used to go out there all the time. My cousins grew up out there and I hadn't been out there in so long. And I were I, like where I was working was right off the same exit. Like everything was so familiar. And I haven't, my cousin lives in New York, so I haven't seen him in a long time. That night as I was getting into bed, he texted me and he's like, Hey, we have plans for the weekend. I'm coming home. And I was like, oh, my God, I was just thinking of you. I was just there. It was so crazy. And um, I'm hearing Build, Build, Build by Destiny's Child everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It's so crazy. Um, there's some more that happened, but I can't think of them right now. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably call back later. Love you guys. Love the show. Love everything you're doing. Hong Kong, bye. <laughs> wow. Hong Kong. Maria? I do I do now see that, yes, Jade is a, is a real little girl. And I just want to say that my reasoning behind not thinking it was because I do a lot of voice modulation trickery. And I know a lot of you out there are tricksters, good-hearted tricksters. And so I, was, I wasn't convinced, but... I do, Jade. I am so glad you're a web crawler's listener, and um, and yes, welcome to welcome to the web crawler's team. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, there you have it. Changed your mind. Well, next, uh, moving <laughs> on. Hi, <laughs> right. from Rock Crawler. Okay. from Toronto. Um, I called a few times before about spooky stuff, but I was actually just listening to your mailbag where someone put out a theory about JonBenet Ramsey not actually existing, and so of course I had to dive <laughs> oh, yeah. into that. Um, I found a super long Twitter thread, dove right in, and now my sister and I are convinced that act- the pictures that we've seen of JonBenet Ramsey are actually just Burke dressed up as a girl. 
Um, oh, I don't know her if brother. this is an insane theory or if my brain is broken from just realizing none of the pageants that Champagne was in were actually real pageants um, and that she might actually just be a hologram or a Photoshop just send picture us that, that her dad created. But anyway, um, yeah. I just thought that was kind of weird and maybe when Allie does a deep dive into Champagne, maybe she can explore if other people thought this too. But anyway, I love your stuff. <laughs> Thanks for always putting up the craziest voicemails and digging my rabbit hole even deeper. So thanks. Love you guys. Bye. Send us that Twitter thread because I remember I we we tried to look it up and we couldn't find anything. Yeah, we couldn't find anything. Like I would love to do an episode on that, but I can't find a single thing. So, huh? Yeah, send us that. <laughs> send us that Twitter thread. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, we got to do a John Bonet episode for sure. Okay, next message. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. Um. I would really love a mini episode or something um, from you guys about weekly world news. Um, if, if you're not familiar with the publication that was sold at the checkout line and grocery store, you just have like real funky headlines. Everything from, um, you know, claiming that George Bush was advised oh. by a mouse to <laughs> existence of mermaids oh, yeah, and everything this. else in Bad between. Boy. Um, I recently found a collector's edition compendium of a bunch of the old covers from over the years, um, which has reignited my interest in, um, weekly world news. But yeah. Um, if you guys would be willing to tackle that, that would be super exciting. Um, okay. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Yeah. These headlines are amazing. Like Hillary Clinton adopts alien baby. I love it. I love it. First like, photos of heaven. <laughs> it's like the na- the National Enquirer. It sounds like yeah, but like well, crazier. But it's all, like cr- it's like v- it's like National Enquirer, but like n- like fake. Like like obviously fake. Yeah. You know, like lizard people have taken over <laughs> and like are living in your in your community. But it's like done very tongue in cheek in a way. But I think I mean maybe some people took it very seriously. But um, I loved it. I used to get it all the time. Oh really? It's pretty yeah. Funny. It was always at the checkout at like CVS and stuff. You just it would be there, and it would be like a picture of like yeah, Hillary Clinton holding like an alien, being like Hillary Clinton goes to Mars and adopts alien baby for like run as Secretary of State or whatever. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, next message. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. This is Maggie, also known as Maggie Doodle in the Discord. Maggie Doodle. Um, I was calling because I had a ridiculous synchronicity today. And I finally had to call about one because they happened constantly to me, but this one was too much. It was just too much. So I was on a plane from visiting my family for 4th of July, and I hadn't been able to listen to the mailbag episode fully yet. So I was listening to it on the plane because I downloaded it. had to make sure I listened to my web crawlers. And I hear the call about somebody talking about JonBenet Ramsey being a hologram. And I was like, well, that's weird. And... I'm interested to see if we look into that more or anything. Oh, that's Um, bizarre. But then they mentioned, you guys mentioned also that Jean-Pierre Ramsey might be Katy Perry. I was like, well, I've heard that. That sounds exciting. (laughs) I hope someday Allie does that episode. Um, (laughs) And then I looked at Time Hop when I landed um, and got home. I was looking at my Time Hop because I hadn't looked at it like I normally do in the morning. And today's was Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl was number one however many years ago. I'm depressed at how long ago that was, so I'm not going to mention it. Then, not three minutes later, the random episode of American Dad that my husband and I are watching, all of a sudden somebody gives Roger a Christmas tree ornament of Jean Benet Ramsey. Like oh, in that weird. angel form or something. Weird. He's like, like she would be, do you think that she would be anything else but an angel? It was adorable and hysterical, but then I lost my mind because I'm like, this is too much, too much synchronicity <laughs> in one damn day. And I yelled at my husband, not, at, not in an angry way, in a cute way, you know, like, oh my God, we're in synchronicity. This is insanity. And then he did a cute thing and he's like, well, if we're in a synchronicity, at least they put us together. And that was cute. So that was Aww. nice. But that was Aww. too much of a synchronicity. And that's all I got. Thank you so much. I love you all. La, la, la. <laughs> that's a lot of Jean Benet, Katy Perry synchronicities. Yeah, send us those links because, like, I swear we researched and I found yeah, nothing I'll try about to find it on them the again, internet. But 
Okay, and then last voicemail of the day. I believe it's oh, a wow. two-parter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, this is for web crawlers. Hi, it's Kai. I've just started to listen to your podcast not too long ago, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, I've not dug in too deep to your podcast. However, I got to an episode of something I actually have been thinking about since listening to your podcast, which is uh, recurring dreams. Um, so a guy talked about how he had a recurring dream with, uh, like, the devil in his basement when he lived in the house. Yeah. And it's kind of like reminds me of my recurring dream because every time I have this dream, um, usually within a week, someone in my family or a close family friend or even one of my friends have died. Oh my God. And it's been the same dream since I've been three years old. So I've been trying to figure out and I've talked to like a bunch of different people, psychologists and everything. And they've only explained it as like, um, just a, like a thing in the back of my head that I already know that this is going to happen. But ever since I was three, I had this one weird dream, and I'll explain it real quick, of um, basically, it's always the same. It never changes. It's the only dream I really remember, like, in detail. Um, so basically, I start, it, it's in a hallway, like, a, um, and it's very Victorian, like a light bluish gray color on the walls with silver light fixtures, like Victorian oil lamps. And I am, like, not me. It's... Like a little girl in a Victorian dress. It's very weird. Well, and it's past a yellow life. Victorian dress with like lace. And at the end of the hallway um, is an older gentleman with a balding head and like brown pants and like suspenders with a like eggshell colored thing. And usually I go to the end of the hall and I open the door and it's a bathroom and the old man is gone. Just basically regular Victorian looking bathroom. There's like maybe not Victorian, but, like the old style toilets with the bowl above it and like the um, sink with the old like um, tile and there's a clawfoot tub and it kind of, it reminds me of The Shining if I should explain the bathroom real quick. Mm. But um, basically um, I walk over to the tub and in the tub is an orange octopus that gets sucked down the drain. I always wake up hot sweat. I have it like just always that. And usually within that week um, it started off with my, um, Step grandmother who died. That's like the first memory I had of it. Um, and then just throughout the years, I keep having this dream. And then within that week, someone close in my family or family friend ends up dying. And people have explained that, like, that's some like mental cog that knows it's going to happen, but I never understand that. Um, a distant cousin that I got in contact with a long time ago, um, basically explained it as, um, my family has premonitions and we've had that for generations on generations and it's wow it's a little weird but that's kind of what it reminded me of um talking and there's a part two so what had happened was there was a part two and i erased it by accident and what happens when lucky lucky listeners get a little text from maria going hey can you help me out because i just uh erased your second part of your voicemail that's i think this has happened three times and so he he was like oh my god yeah he was very nice about it but he was like i can't quite remember what i said so this is him sending in a a second part to it as best he can this is crazy wow hi this is for web crawlers it's kai again um I don't really remember what I was saying on um, part two because when I called you, it was right after work and I was terrified to call you guys. But um, uh, anyway, um, so I don't necessarily remember um, what I mean. The death dream is like the most terrifying thing I had as a kid. I guess I'll talk about the premonitions a little bit because I can't remember what I said in the last one. Yeah. Um, just on the basis of my cousin, I guess, um, like distant cousin from like Tennessee she's like 80 something and I'm like 21 so really distant but she we had a phone call once just talking right after my grandfather died and in the middle she was talking about um just some something that was happening in her life and then she goes do you have premonitions and um just freaked me out she's like do you ever like see dreams and and people die and blah 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 and going on and she's like that's in our family blood that's a bloodline thing um and then she's very christian so she was like anointed by god and she's like we're anointed by god and blah 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 and um so cut to just like basically everything else that's ever happened um wise with predicting the future um 
the main instance I would say for my own death is I didn't have that dream, but I had a, um, I was in a car ride coming back from a haunted house with my friends and I fell asleep in the car cause it was like two in the morning. And, um, I had dreamed that we got in a car wreck and a pole went through my face like, a, uh, Oh God, like really bad. And it, I woke up freaking out. My friend who lived right next to me had to go pick up money cause she said, we're going to go out to eat. I freaked the fuck out. I got out of the car, um, ran home, left, and just basically went home and went in. Cut to the next morning. I see her car coming in, being pulled in the driveway. They've gotten a car wreck behind a truck that had a pole. It flew out and it would have killed me where I was sitting. Uh, so, like, I was like, okay, great. Thank you, ghost what people, a for telling this me, guy or has. whoever, spirits, ancestors. Um, but basically mostly like that. So I, I would know stuff about people before I made a joke, um, at prom about someone who, um, I was like, oh, she's pregnant. She's going to have a dumpster baby, which is, this is very mean. I was an asshole in high school <laughs> and, um, it turned out that happened and it became like a national headline oh. case, the Brooke Skyler Richardson case. And I don't consider that one, but I always like to say I knew it before everyone else knew it, but, um, no, with the death dream though, it just, it was a terrifying thing. I had as a kid and I still have it once in a while to this day on the last. That's it. Is there another one? I want him to come on and like do a reading if like, oh my God, yeah. that's crazy, that's man. crazy. No, that's it. Okay. Damn. Well, well please damn. like email us or call back. Like we are so fascinated, or at least I am. I think we that's all are like fascinated crazy. by your gift. Like this is banana town my That's god terrifying yeah i want like i wonder like do you do readings or does this just like like are you trying to develop this or is this just something you kind of like live with and like as it comes you kind of just like go with the flow like i just have so many questions <laughs> um also, uh, we are going to try to do another live show seance coming up. Uh, yes. We're going to try it with John Tenney. We're still working out the date. We are going to try to do it on a Friday the 13th uh, coming up. Uh, but we will keep you all uh, in the loop. Uh, so get excited for that. Anyways, please keep emailing and voicemailing us. And also, please rate and review us. It means a lot uh, to us. It helps our podcast helps us get ads, and it also uh, helps us in the charts, and so we really appreciate it. Anyways, I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I, producer Maria. And that's all, folks. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.